Hey guys, this is Janae. I'm painting this really pretty leaf from Diverse Woodworking. It's adorable. Um, there's so many different options you have for this, but I found a picture I liked on Pinterest, and this is my inspiration. I am not going to go exactly like this, but I kind of wanted to give it that type of look. So, we're going to go ahead and put this over to the side and get started. You can see I've already got all my colors over here on my plate and I'm using this big fat brush because I'm going to cover a lot of area and not do a lot of details. Alright, so basically you just dip your brush and just start adding it to the leaf, to the wooden piece. And there's no rhyme or reason at all. I am just flipping my brush around and giving different textures. And you'll see what I mean a little more when I pick up the next color. And I'm not even going to rinse my brush. I'm just going to continue on using what color I have on the brush and pick up the next color. I want it to blend a little bit. So you can see here it's blending really pretty. And then I'm just flipping my brush around and doing different directions. We're going to go a little from the left, a little from the right, um, and just go over it as many times as you want to till you get the color you like. And then I want this color to fade into the next color. So now I'm going to keep going over this till I get the, the fade that I like, the blend. Now I'm picking up some orange. We're just going to keep up picking that up and blending it in until I get the color I like for this next little section. You can see I'm not really working too hard on this, giving it a lot of thought or anything. I'm just picking up color and using this brush to go in different directions to blend it together. Um, some are gonna be blended better than others and some are gonna be not blended very much and that's perfect, that's the look I'm going for. And I love all the different texture that's in this because I'm bringing the brush in all different directions. So this first coat is going to look a little muted, um, but then we're going to go back over it once everything's dry and we'll keep doing this same thing. And you kind of have to work fast when you're doing this, especially when you're trying to blend colors. Um, you can't blend anything that's dry, so when you go and pick up your second color, you have to make sure that that first layer that you're putting on, that first coat, is dry, not dry, it's still wet. So you'll see that I'm working pretty quickly. And as I move on to the next color, you just start where the, the first color ended. You're going to just pick up a little bit of that next color, put them together, and see what you get. I wanted this right here, this section I'm working on now, to be a little bit more purpley. Um, this is not quite the purple I was going for, so I'm adding a little bit of turquoise to give it the color that I was hoping for. Let's we'll see if that gives me a little more of a rich purple. That is more of the color I was wanting. So we're just going to pick that up and start blending it in. So that purple is not blending super good, so I'm going to pick up a little red, I think, and try to blend it a little more with the red. There we go. That's more what I'm wanting. I want the red to fade into the purple. And so we may have to work on a few little areas like this as we go along, and that's okay. It won't hurt a thing. Like I said, there's no right or wrong. Um, you just keep painting till you get the the look that you like. That purple was really dark, so it's going to take a little bit more of those lighter colors. I hope you guys can see that. It's going to take a little bit more of those lighter colors to blend with that purple, but it should be just fine the way it is. It should look really great. Now, something to keep in mind is when you mix yellow and orange, you're just going to get more of a orange. When you mix yellow and green, you're going to get a little bit of a funky green. If you mix yellow and purple, you're going to get a brown. So 
as long as that's the color that you want, then you're fine. Otherwise, you're gonna wanna be very careful when you mix your yellow and your purple. And I'm okay with brown because we're already, we already have brown on our leaf, that's fine. So there's no big worry about that. You see how it's picking that purple up into that yellow and it's creating this brown fade? That is just fine. As long as that's okay with you, then you're good. And the same with orange and green. It's gonna give you a funny little brown color, but that's okay because when we're fading, there's no right or wrong. I added a little green, a little white to my green because I wanted it to be a little less transparent. And that white helps everything have more finished look. Now we'll just come down and pick up some more of that orange and work our way back up to the top. And see again, working really quickly because we have this wet paint we're working with. We want it to blend, so we have to work quickly. So now we just pick up a dab of whatever your next color is, and you just keep adding it to the leaf. Anywhere you feel like it's not blended very well, you can just pick up more. Like if I wanted to blend that green a little bit more, all I need to do is pick up more green and start blending. I got this area up here a little too light, so I'm going to have to let that dry probably and come back in and add some dark. Look how pretty that looks. I hope you guys can see these colors is so vibrant. So now I'm going to pick up a little red to go with this brown. Look how pretty that looks, you guys. And then we'll keep adding red as we come back down. We'll add a little more red and orange. How's it going for you guys? I bet you're not used to having to work this quick. Like I said, you just keep going back and forth with the different directions of your brush, picking up the colors you like and blending them in to your next color. I'm loving this leaf. I hope you guys are. I'm thinking it's turning out beautiful. It's got me in the mood for fall already. All right, and so we're coming around to the end. And based on my inspiration, my picture that I saw I liked, it's going to go back to brown as we work our way around. And then back to yellow. And then I'm going to do the stem on brown. So, it's, I know it has a glare on the screen, but that's yellow, a little bit of yellow and orange and brown right there in the middle. You'll be able to see it a little better here in a second. I'll lift it up so we can get that glare off. And so now I'm just going to do this stem, just solid brown. All right. Give it a little texture here and there. We didn't want it to be so smooth. We wanted to have a little shadowing and texture. And the more that purple dries, the more it is hidden a little bit. So I'm just picking up a little bit more of it and blending it in. Because as it's drying, I can tell that it's getting a little bit more muted. So we'll come back in and add a little second layer to this and it'll make a big difference. Okay, let's lift it up so you can see it without that glare. Look at how beautiful and vibrant that is. I love those colors. That just really puts me in the mood for fall. All right, so I'm going to look back over here in my brushes and see if I have any other brush I want to try and use. And I really don't. I'm, I'm really liking that big brush. Let me see. Matter of fact, I think I am going to pick this smaller brush. I think I want to see if this is going to give me a little bit more of the texture that I want as I'm blending. So this is like a medium flat brush. And I'm just going to try it a little bit and see what we think. 
I love that yellow. I think that's so pretty. So most of this had dried already, and there may be a little bit that's still left wet, but for the most part it was dry. So we're just going to go back over everything and blend the best we can. And as you can see, like right here with this red, all I have to do is go over it a little bit with that yellow. It was just the tiniest bit wet, so it made a big difference in not having to add a lot more paint. Um, as we're doing the second coat, you'll find that you, it won't take near as much paint. It won't absorb as much as it did in the first layer. I find a lot of times that these wooden products, they do absorb the paint a little faster than the canvases did. But that's a good thing, I think. I mean, it keeps things moving right along. And I, I like that it dries a little faster. So now, you can see I'm still moving pretty quickly. And I'm just flipping this brush back and forth, getting each little dab of paint off and blending with the next color as I go. And just working really quickly again because we want our paint to stay wet while we're working. Pick up maybe a little more yellow if you need to to blend that. It's up to you. It's up to you how blended you want this to look. So basically, you're going to do this same process all the way around the leaf. And you're going to base your, your color on the color that was already there on your first layer. So I picked up some red right here and I'm working. Then I'll start wor working around with a little more purple. I'm just going to follow those same colors that I already have out here. And just try to help them blend. And um, keep a nice thick second layer. And yes, it does look like I've added speed to the video, but I really haven't. I really am going just this fast. Um, it's just because I want that paint to blend well, and it's easier to keep it wet. Um, and also, I don't want it to be at this point where I really sit down and think about every little brush stroke. I really want it to be a little bit of a, a more free, freehand type look. So just continue on around, you guys. I'll check back in with you in just a little bit.
Okay, and now we're back down here to the end. So, as you guys see a little bit of glare, I'll lift it so you can get the glare to go away. Um, I'm going to go ahead and blow this dry. And you'll see that glare just instantly disappear when that hot air hits it as it's drying. That's how you know something's still wet. If it's shiny, it's wet. If it's uh, matte looking, then it's completely dry. So, we'll just hit this real quick with the hair dryer. And you'll just watch it, watch that sheen and glare just totally disappear. Alright you guys, now it's dry. You can see how beautiful it is. And you could leave it like that if you want to. Or, I'm going to go ahead and add these veins that you see in my inspiration picture. I'm not going to do all those little squares, but I am going to do the veins. So, in order to do that, I'm going to pick up my flat, I'm sorry, my round tip script brush. And, some people call it a liner brush. And I'm just going to pick up some burnt umber. And mix it up with a little bit of water because I want to make sure it flows off of my brush well. And roll it around till you get a nice tip. And then you're just going to come up through the middle of this leaf with our very first vein. And I think it will be easier to start up here at the top and work our way down. That's usually how I have a more steady hand myself. Okay, as you can see, I propped my hand on my pinky. Instead of sliding my whole hand down through the leaf, I just slid my pinky. So, in case I had paint on my hand or anything, it wouldn't make a mess. So, we're going to go over that line again. If you find any areas of it that you don't like, that you feel like are wobbly or maybe don't have enough paint, just go right back over it. It's no problem at all. Okay, now we've got that vein done, we're going to start on the veins on the right hand side. Going to go up and down, just bring it to the tip of the leaf. There we go. We're going to do that same thing to the next leaf. We're just going to do that same idea to each point on the leaf. Pick up a little extra water if you need to. Just make sure that flows well off your brush. Look how pretty this is looking, you guys. I'm loving it. I hope you guys are. Okay, so now we're going to go up to that last tip. Notice how I started almost all of them right there at the same point. This one we're going to go up a little bit. We're not going to branch off till a little bit higher up the leaf. Okay, now we're going to do the left side of the leaf. And it's going to be basically a mirror image. We're going to do it pretty much the same way. I'm going to the first point with a nice smooth line and then we'll pick up more paint and go to the second point with a nice smooth line. Like I said, basically a mirror image. And these are just going to be the main veins. We'll add those smaller little veins in just a few minutes. I love how that one bends. I think that one's so pretty. 
And keep in mind, the more pressure you add to the brush, the thicker your line. So if you want a thinner line, just don't add as much pressure with your hand. Don't push down as much. Okay, and this was done with a medium round tip brush. So I'll go to a smaller round tip brush here in a minute, I think, for these next veins. All right, so there, you guys can see it without the glare. That again was my medium round tip brush. And we're gonna look for our smaller round tip brush for our next little set of veins. See how much smaller that is? It's very, very thin. And we're just gonna take that and add little branches. It's almost like tree branches. We're gonna add little branches off of these main veins. Just a few little lines here and there. And then maybe a branch off of that one. And then a little branch to the right. Maybe one little branch off of it. There's no rhyme or reason. I'm just going with whatever I think would look pretty. Some little veins will have more branches off of them than others, and that's okay. If you want, you can actually find a leaf to look at, and well, look at those veins. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I don't really have a plan, but you could even find a, a leaf and go by that if you wanted to, if you wanted it to look even more realistic. And of course, you could have stopped and not added any of these little veins and just, um, left it the way it was, or you could have wrote a name or done a monogram, anything like that over top of this leaf would be beautiful. And I just really liked those vein, I, the veins in the sample, so I thought I would try to do that. I like to try to find a picture for inspiration. I don't want to do it exactly like that, because I don't want to steal someone else's work, but I do like certain things about it, so I'll peel a little of this that I like from one design and then I'll take a little of this I like from another design and kind of make it my own and come up with my own little look. So you guys can do that same thing. And now you're just going to keep this process all the way around the leaf. You're going to do exactly the same thing you're doing here all the way around. Um, there's really not anything different. So, for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and speed this part up, and you guys can catch up with me in just a few minutes. Okay, guys, what do you think? 
I absolutely love it so very, very much. You could hold it, you could hang it upside down, put a pretty little bow up here on the stem, or you can write something on it that way, or you can do it this way. You could, I don't know which way I like better. I think I like this way better, but that's just me. But there's nothing saying you can't do it the other way. Um, how cute would it be to do a couple smaller leaves and just hang them down from it? That would be really cute with a little bit of twine. All right, so now I'm checking to see if this is dry because I'm going to try to do, well, you know, I was thinking about adding some lettering to it, but I really, really don't want to mess it up because I absolutely love it the way it is. So I may just do some finishing touches. Either way, I want to make sure all this dark brown is dry. So we'll just hit it with this hair dryer and before we move forward. Okay, you guys, so I've decided not to add any words. I'm just going to do my finishing touches, which is some quick little outlines around the outside. In order to do that, I'm going to use this gold. Um, that would be really pretty to write with, too. I'm going to use it just to do some finishing touches around the outside, a few little wispies here and there. Um, hopefully, this gold will really pop and stand out pretty. <gasps> Look how beautiful. Okay, you guys, that's like, this is like so gorgeous. Again, just take that brush, load it up, and just do a few wispies here and there. I hope you guys can see how pretty that gold looks. The sun's going to hit that, and it's going to look just beautiful hanging on your door. I love that. You can put um, wispies pretty much anywhere. You can connect them. They don't have to be connected. It would also be pretty to do, if you wanted to, you could do a really sharp line all the way around and like an outline. But I like this where you come in just a little bit from the edge and give it just the hint of an outline here and there. I think that's just beautiful. Now I'm going to turn this around just so I get better angle on these upper areas. How you doing you guys how's yours turning out now this gold's not showing up very much on this green but it might just be the angle of the light right now so we'll see when we're done give it a tilt and see if it shows up a little more I love how it's showing up on this brown maybe that's all you need just a little bit of a reflection you don't want too much. All right, let's see how it looks. Ooh, look at that, you guys. When the light hits it just right, it's absolutely beautiful. All right, I think we're done. I hope this was helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed the process. And I can't wait to see what you guys have done. Feel free to go to Diverse Woodworking's Facebook page and share what you've done. You can add a name. You can do all kinds of stuff with this. So um, be sure to like and subscribe the video if you want to get notifications anytime they add more videos. Okay? Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.